tell the truth. A lot of people switching up, so tell me what I'm supposed to do. What's happening, guys? Today I'm gonna be changing the timing belt. Timing belt, man. Why? Why did it have to be the timing belt? It didn't break or anything. The car's just getting close to 100,000 kilometers. That's when you gotta change the timing belt for Skylines. This works for the RB25DE, RB25DET, and RB26DETT. Sounded weird when I was saying that, but yeah. Alright, so first thing you guys want to do is remove this air intake piece. Not the whole intake, just this piece right here. Well, to do that, you got to remove a clip here. Oh, I think I lost that. So I have one clip left, so I got to take that clip out. And then there's gonna be like a little hose on it. You just you don't take the hose off. You just take it off, like the clamp, like that. That's it. It's off. And then you just gotta pull on this, like that. But not pull on it, but you gotta lift it a bit and then pull on it. And it just comes right out. Bam! We got tons of room already. All right, guys. Then remove the four screws from the fan. All right. Remove the screws from the fan. Before you guys start, remove the negative terminal for the battery. Because you gotta do it. Now, I unscrewed the fan. What you wanna do is pull the fan out. Pull it out. And then just lift. Alright, y'all. What you wanna do now is remove this screw, this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw. And what I'm going to do is mark a point right there on from that silver piece to the black so I can line it up the same way once I put it back in. I'm doing it just in case. That is part of the timing so I think I should mark it and so should you guys. Oh, oh there's another screw here. Yeah, remove that too. Okay guys, I unplugged the harness. Be gentle with the harness. You guys don't want to go around breaking wires. It's a headache to fix. Just be nice to them. Get this cover here. Just pull that. Comes right off. Harness. Take it out nicely. Get it out of the way. Alright guys. I have some screws hiding on me. So there's one more. Right there. Remove that. No more right there. If they're hiding on you. Take them off. Because you got to take that cover off. Alright. Take that cover off. Okay guys, got the cover off, and I don't like what I'm seeing. The belt is cracking. What the hell happened out here? Alright guys, I'm going to show you how, how to remove the belt for uh, the alternator, power steering, and AC compressor. So, I'm using a 14mm socket for the power steering. Put this bolt away somewhere safe, it's for the power steering pump. Next, you need a 12mm wrench to get on that bolt. If you have a better tool, use it. Alright guys, after you get it a little loose, it just starts coming off with your fingers. See, just, just coming off. You get it off on my fingers. That, right there. I'm just turning it with my fingers. I'm not going to get it all the way out. I'm going to go about halfway or more. There's one more bolt you're going to want to loosen. It's right there. For the power steering pump and like I said loosen it don't remove it fully and then once you do that it's so easy to remove the, to move the power steering pump up and down so after you do that you just push the power steering pump down like that it moves down and then the belt the belt just comes right off now to do the AC belt what you gotta do is See this bolt right here? Okay, so there's gonna be a bolt on the tensioner. You're gonna loosen that. You're not gonna remove it. You just loosen that. And then right under, you're gonna feel another bolt. You're also gonna loosen that. Okay, the alternator belt usually just comes off right when you've removed the fan. Because this piece of the fan comes off and the belt comes off. But to put it back on, you gotta unscrew that. And then just loosen this, loosen this, then you can move the alternator, then you can adjust the belt when you're putting it back on. Alright guys, so I removed the alternator belt, the AC belt, power steering belt, 
because the crank wasn't coming off so what I'm gonna do is I put the socket wrench there guys what you want to do is disconnect this once you have that set for leverage you tie it up a little bit to the wrench so it doesn't move and then you turn the car over and it should unscrew the crank bolt itself all right guys it worked got the crank bolt out. oh shit oh damn it okay yeah but i got the crank bolt out so yeah we're good it hey guys next part you gotta remove the crank pulley all right guys next thing you want to do is remove the radiator to remove the radiator you got to take off this hose and then you got to take off this hose make sure you drain out your radiator first you have to take out all the coolant that's in there so you gotta do that and also remove this bolt and this bolt and this will come out then you can like push the radiator and then pull it right out alright guys I just took that piece out so what you want to do is when you unscrew this and take the pipes off this thing starts moving so you just keep moving and you and you pull on it as you're moving it and it just comes right out and now what you have to do is you have to remove that pipe that pipe and that pipe and then the, you can just lift the radiator up so after you take the radiator out you just tighten the pulley puller then you get your socket wrench tighten it and then the crank will start coming out Alright guys, it's coming out, but one thing I'm not happy about is this. It's cracking this while it's trying to pull the crank out. But it's working, so it's all good. So all you do is turn it to the right, and the crank starts coming out. Oh, it's coming out, see? Pretty sweet actually, but like I said, it's cracking that ring right there. After you guys do that, you guys gotta remove the bolt for this cover. So just look all around, whatever bolts you see that are holding this, remove those and you gotta take that off. And make sure you leave like a pan under your car so it collects all the coolant. Because even after you take the radiator out, you drain it, the, the coolant's still gonna leak from the pipe. So just leave it at the bottom of the car there was a tensioner here I used a 14 millimeter socket and I removed it this is the tensioner and the spring comes off with it and then you could just take the timing belt right off and I marked my uh, cams already so this lines up to that this lines up to that and I marked the crank down there too. When you're taking the belt off, just do it nicely. You don't want to move the cams or anything. Just leave it the way it is. Take the belt off gently. Now it's time to remove the water pump. Take all these bolts out that you see holding the water pump. Those two, and I might have to remove that too because it's blocking one of the screws. So I'm going to get started. I put the new water pump on. Look at that, it's fresh. Put the bolts on, now I'm gonna tighten them. That's the old water pump. Nothing happened to it, it's just that if I'm doing the timing belt, why not do the water pump, right? So I'm gonna tighten all the bolts. Put the idler back. And then we'll go to the next part. All right guys, so next part, this is my new tensioner. That's the old one, so I need to take the spring off the old tensioner, put it on this one, and then I can put it back on the car, and we can put the timing belt on. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, I put the timing belt on. It's hard to do yourself. If you have a buddy to help you, that'd be awesome, but if you don't, what you do is, you put the belt on this, on this part, on this part over here, this, like, on the tensioner, and then you put the belt on the crank. But then when it comes to this part, you gotta, it's gonna be a little harder because you really gotta pull and then you gotta slide it right there where the idler is. 
Alright guys, so I got the timing belt on. I tensioned it to how I want it. What you do is you get the 27mm socket and you turn the crank. You turn it for about two revolutions and um, it shouldn't it shouldn't hit anything. Like you shouldn't hear any pistons hitting the head or anything. If you do, you know you messed up. You don't have to rebuild the engine or anything because you did it by hand. You just set the, you just fix the cams you messed up on. Don't try to start it. Only start it when you know for sure that you got it lined up properly. And uh, I'm pretty sure I did. So I'm gonna go and uh, that's it. Put everything back together.